It's yes, got up from the VAR room in Stockley yeah. Park to make sure the audio is coming. Just, just waiting for the stream to actually kick in. But, you know, Grizz Harry, Khan, Harry Simeon, Jacob Colshaw, Scott Saunders. <laughs> this is unbelievable, by the way. Um, Grizz, it's been an incredible start to the day. Yeah, have you, have you processed it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Taking it all in our stride, really. If we're professional. Oh, we're in. We're, we're in. in. We're, we're in. in. We're on. Hi, in, I feel like we've managed to get through it. Shout out to producer Ben. What? It was a bit of a... Ben had a little... Pa no panic, actually. What's the, no, no what, panic. what's the football equivalent to what Ben did there? He did a he did a Jorginho in midfield when he's got three players around him. He just... Pressure was on. Put, checked he put his foot on the ball, checked over the shoulder. Next didn't get dispossessed. You know, didn't, just, yeah, exactly. Just, just passed Press resistant. Used his body in the right way. Yeah. He's protected the ball from the right angles and then progressed it through the lines. Beautiful. Jake, thought, are you gonna are you gonna slag off Grizz again like you did? I in didn't. The so this is. The, I mean, look. <laughs> you, you probably saw us being quite passionate in the intro there, and Grizz basically twisted quite my passionate. words by saying, basically Harry wasn't with us on Monday. It's great to have him back. And I just said to Grizz, it's not the same. Turning to my right and not seeing Harry and just Grizz. Well, you didn't say that. Exactly, what did I say then, Chris? Because no one could prove otherwise, mate. No one heard. It. <laughs> <laughs> there are lip readers out there. There are lip readers. But now, nah, listen. It's great to have Harry back. It's great to have uh, you guys with us as well. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going. Then. <laughs> yeah, but it's great to be back and talking football. Hopefully, talking people football. can hear us. Do you know what? If you can hear us, make sure to leave a like on the Bonus? video. Bonus. <laughs> yeah. If you can hear us, make sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe tonight, start. man. Follow us on our social channels to hear us talk about and waffle about football. And subscribe I've had to the a week off Twitter. Have you? Can't be asked. Is it X? I mean, it's week off X. Why have you had a week off? I just can't be bothered. Brilliant. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I just, I just like to. So what? When we, so that means you're gonna have another week off when we beat you on Sunday maybe, as well. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. That's two weeks off. Is it weird that I kind of saved my break? You just said you weren't confident. <laughs> <before> <laughs> no, I just wanted to get you off track. <laughs> Do you know what the thing is? Like the problem with social media for me is that it's become such a big part that mm. I pick up my phone and I open X and I scroll through it like automatically yeah it's like I'll be doing Courses. nothing and Courses. I'll just pick up my phone and I'll mm. open it and I'll scroll Courses. I don't know how I would take a break like I'd love to but I don't know if I could just switch off myself. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's difficult it's, it's difficult especially if it's if it's related to your work as well and because it's related to our work then that's why it's difficult to switch off if it was just a um, you know just a just a hobby then yeah you can switch off but if it's work related you do need to access it from time mm. to time I don't know how you managed it. Well, I don't believe you. Think, you. Well, if you think that Liverpool I don't thing believe wasn't you. a penalty and you tweet about it, then you might get uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. We do have an exclusive. That's the YouTube comment for the other day. We do have an exclusive. We do have an exclusive. Hold on. You was hounded off there next. No, you didn't leave it by me. No, 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 no. I haven't posted since after... Okay. Uh, after that tweet where I said, I think City should beat this Liverpool 11. That was so one. to anyone who watched our show on Monday... We do have an exclusive. Scott didn't check the comments and he asked me what the comments were saying and I just said, look, they disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I know I wasn't here and I know it's late. That was absolutely a penalty. Okay, fair enough. That was a, st that was a okay. kung fu kick in the penalty area. Thanks, Aaron. Right. Was, so it, was, it, it, was it worse? Was it worse than Mane on Edison? I mean, that was no, that was the conversation. No, that, that, was, that, was, that was that wasn't yeah, the that was that given, He's had a week to figure out what, <laughs> what to compare it to. That was given a red card. Saying. Scott slept That's on it. When you know saying. what, I'm going to double down it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get into the football. There's a couple of bits that I wanted to talk, touch on before we get on to some Champions League um, action as well. Did anyone see John uh, John Henderson's interview at Ajax? Yes, I did watch. Brutal. It. Yeah. What do we think of it? Is that if that guy's apparently that's his style. He's a very aggressive interview. Well, interviewee. And Jordan a lot Henderson, of Eredivisie interviews are like that, though. They're very straight to but, the but point. Now we, but now, the but, but guys, do we understand now why some Dutch sort of... Um, Rafa van der Vaart is a pundit, right? They're very outspoken yeah. now. What did he say about Maguire van der Vaart? I mean, it was pretty oh, brutal. He just essentially brutal. called him the S-word, didn't he? I think. Wow. Yeah, brutal, just brutal. Yeah, just really brutal analysis. Like Jordan Henderson yeah. didn't see that coming. I haven't seen this. I need to oh, watch it. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're going to be shocked. We should really do the live reaction on the show. Yeah, we should have seen the live reaction. I've been out of the loop a couple Basically, of days. Basically, just seen. long story short, he said, you played pretty poor today. Why was it bad? You agree it's bad. It was, it was a lot just, of uh, just horizontal passing. And yeah, no, pretty ruthless. No, like no penetration. Proper ruthless. It's Would you say it was bad? It's the opposite of your technique of interviewing. You're like so nice and sort of understanding this guy was absolutely in his face and you, 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 see, you can see Jordan Henderson's face like wow he dealt with it very well Sky was lovely yeah, <laughs> Jeff Shreves was a piece of <laughs> I'll tell you what, bring, them up, bring those sort of interviews over to Sky um, 
And also another bit of news that we just had before we come onto the show. Another injury for Kevin De Bruyne, a minor groin issue, which means oh, he might how be very convenient that he will be back squad. for Man City's. Oh, my, mind you, he's missing the Newcastle. So, do we think this is a convenient injury, Scott? No, no, I, 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 can't, I can't speculate. But we have seen them. I can before. Go on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Keep him away from international duty because they've been managing him very carefully as it is. Alex Ferguson used to do it all the time. Sorry, lads. My, my guy can't he play. Did, yeah. He's got a minor problem. They're I'd be absolutely shocked, amazed, astounded if he misses any football for Man City. Oh, he's, he's out yeah. of the Newcastle No, the Newcastle game, but the, yeah, the FA Cup, yeah. But it, he's nailed on, nailed on to be ready for Arsenal. Yeah, the big run-in as well. Of course. Big run-in at the top of the table, big run-in at the bottom of the table. It was Bournemouth 4, Luton 3, which we'll briefly just touch upon. The lad said to me beforehand you're going to get this into the show somehow. And I think we do. Ben made a great point that it's the first time since 2003 that a Premier League team has come from three goals behind to win a game. So shout out to the Cherries. Um, <laughs> i tell you what. Do you want to praise Ross Barkley? Uh, so, so uh, uh, Great goal. Great finish, really great goal. Great finish, but yeah. really good tracking back for that, that winner as well from Semenyo. <laughs> do we think that's Luton done now? Do you think that's it? Uh, yeah. That is, that, is that the final nail in the coffin? No, I wouldn't I say... So. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, but 3 nil. Surely one. that's a sucker punch, though. You're looking that's at That's a that. humongous... But if you can't rely on them to take points when they're 3-0 up, then when can you rely on them? Well, like, they've yeah. been up 3-0 at um, Bournemouth, 2-0 two, two up at Newcastle. Very good point. 1-0 no. up at Liverpool. Like, they've gone up against so many teams, it's mental. No, that's already three points off uh, 17th. Yeah, but he means in terms of mental... Forest on Saturday Ooh, for Luton as well. Big old game, game that is. Wow, the Nuno Edwards. And derby. it's at Luton. Box office. So if Luton can beat Forest, they've got level on points. Box office. What, what, what's and the potentially pro- out of the relegation zone as well. What's the problem though? Is it fitness? Is it that they are just don't have the quality so they can't sustain that level no, for the, a nine I, I think, no, like, they, What's got, the issue? Guys, if they, you're Rob Edwards, what would you be thinking? Well, he said in his post-match career, sorry, he said that the signs were there in the first half that they were making errors and they weren't winning their individual battles. And he basically said that he wasn't surprised that we let the game slip in the way they did because there were the signs there in the first half. What do you put it down to? I, I think it's record? a sm- Of course, the quality is a major, major issue, but they play the same squad. They, if you pick up a couple of injuries, Luton's squad, we know, <laughs> is one of the smallest in, 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 in the Premier League, if not the smallest. Um, and like, if you're playing the same players week in, week out, and you're playing twice a week, it's going to catch you out and you're going to suffer. And... As I said, they've taken the lead in so many games, yet they've not been able to see them through. There's definitely a, a fatigue, tiredness. Not, I'm not saying up to Premier League levels of fitness, but just general players not being able to be rotated enough. Sweet. There we go. Do you know what? Shout out to uh, Ross Barkley. Shout out to- <laughs> yeah, you've glossed over Ross Barkley completely. I feel like I'm trying to get trapped. Is, he, get, is he getting named in today's England squad? He's not getting again. named in the, the squad probably ever again. <laughs> there, was, there was a period where I thought, you know what? There's a great shout. I like to think that it was not a bad take, that Ross Barkley's having a great season. It people. was a Jake take. No, no. <laughs> but I, another... but another was looking great by the week on a free transfer. You know? But another good goal from Solanke. And this is the oh, one. I mean, that was... We, we watched it back this morning and I went... Nice. <gasps> When nice. it happened, I, I literally gasped. It was so good. What was so good about it? Just the, the composure. The, I think the, the fact that he did the turn. Did it go through his legs mm. as well? Turn through his legs and then having the like coolness to like dink it over. I think it was. Just I think. Wonderful. I think. I think it was literally pre-planned from the moment the ball was in the air. So he knew exactly what he was gonna do all the way through. So he didn't dink it at the last second. He knew exactly as soon as I get through, it's gonna dink it first time. It's, it's brilliant technique from Solanke. Oh, I, lo- I love it. Oh, go on. But if my centre half's parted like the Red Sea there, <laughs> like that. No, that's a, that's a fair. Like, that's a fair. He brings the ball <laughs> down. <laughs> he should have Harry. to. If he was an Arsenal player, we'd be seeing. If that was Ber- no, 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 no. Did no, he mean no. it? Did he mean it? Dennis Burkamp. <laughs> Dennis Burkamp. Ab- <laughs> Dennis Burkamp had a track record of doing amazing things in football. We're talking. We, uh, this is Golanke, Dennis Burkham. We're talking about Dominic Solanke here. Let's 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 this calm Dominic down. Dominic Come on. Like, it's really good from Solanke, but the centre halves nah, should just stand in his way. You don't dive in. You just stand in his way. And if he turns and runs into you, that's not foul. Look, ultimately, you score you can, seven goals in a game. You know the defence is wasn't the talking yeah. point. And all those seven goals were at one end as well. Yeah, I mean, what a, I, I noticed that. What? What a fantastic. What does that mean, though? This <laughs> no, but if, if you're in that end, fantastic no, that's ticket, what I mean. right? If you're that's at the other end, it's a little bit, money, bit, 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 bit Ask for your money yeah. back. 
Um, battle for the Championship. Let's talk for the battle for the Champions League. That's my segue there. Um, Arsenal versus Porto. Throw on penalties. Harry, you were there at the Emirates. You said it was one of the magical nights at the Emirates. Probably the night that a lot of Arsenal fans were hoping for and dreaming about when you hadn't been in the Champions League. You First time in 14 years yeah. that Arsenal got through to the quarterfinals. Special night. Is the manner and the way you've won it make that extra special as no, well? No, it was horrible, man. Really? It okay. Was, oh, it was not, awful. not even afterwards. You look at it and go. No, because wow, it was okay. just the stress levels, man. It, yeah. it just didn't need to get to that point. I think a lot of people, sort of after the game, have been saying that Arsenal couldn't break down Porto. You know, maybe they didn't take them seriously enough. I disagree with all of that. I think Porto were fantastic defensively. They were so good. They they closed down all the right spaces. They stopped Arsenal doing all the things that they normally do. And they made Arsenal have to try and find different ways. One bit of brilliance from Odegaard released Trossard for the goal. Outside of that, they limited Odegaard. They limited Saka. Um, they limited Declan Rice. I'm not saying Declan Rice was bad. No one in Arsenal colours was bad. But they just managed to like, yeah, just stifle a team that has been so sort of free-flowing in recent weeks. And, and you've got to give Porto a lot of credit for that. Again, that stop-start stuff we keep talking about. Ball was in play, I think, 59 minutes of the 130-odd that were played. So, again, they've they've managed to do that for the second leg in a row. And they made it tough. And when it got to penalties, there's me sitting there thinking, last season, in the Europa League, we went out at home to Portuguese opposition from penalties. It's written, and I can see the headlines tomorrow. And then we're going to have to sit on that for 18, 19 days before we play <coughs> Manchester City. Worst feeling. So, credit to Arsenal. They obviously done their homework with the penalties in terms of... Um, practicing it, the takers, but also the goalkeeper done his homework. Um, and the most significant thing about that game, obviously Arsenal are through, great, first time in 14 years, you're in the quarterfinals, happy days. And I think they needed to continue on that wave of confidence going into the City game. But the best thing was for me, that was the night that David Raya became an Arsenal player, in that the fans now open their arms up and, and receive him. Whereas before it was always nothing really to do with David Raya, but it's always like you've always had that divide. We love Aaron Ramsdale. You know, he didn't do enough wrong, blah, blah, blah. And almost this was the perfect week for David Raya because Ramsdale comes in on Saturday and makes an absolute howler. <clears throat> and then Arsenal still find a way to win the game anyway. So nothing lost. But then Raya comes in and he's the hero. So if there were any questions now about Raya or Ramsdale, this is it now. It's done. Um, he's the number one, clearly. And he's got to pay. You got to pay for him in the summer, right? Yeah. Twenty-seven. Yeah. That's looking like a, I think that's looking like a good deal. It's a, it's a good deal. But the thing is, we'll probably get that for Ramsdale. Nah, you won't. I have to admit, think? Harry, I was surprised. Oh, God, I was surprised there was that. even debate about Raya and, and Ramsdale in terms of quality. I immediately as soon as Raya came in, I thought his, his levels above Ramsdale. So in terms of which, you, is that a bit of revisionism That's from not you? Revi oh, no, and are you, anyone, are you sure? anyone who knows me personally, are you sure? Anyone who knows are me you personally, sure? anyone who knows me personally, <laughs> <laughs> he's reshaped. So like his mum and dad and his five mates <laughs> and you guys. I said uh, the only I always felt that Ramsdale was a great shot stopper. I don't think there's any doubt about. It. I think the Brentford game summed him up. He's just erratic. And I, when I watch Ramsdale, I never feel comfortable watching him. I don't know, as an Arsenal fan, I feel like with David Ray, he, there's an element of, of coolness. Yeah, it's but there calm. wasn't... But to be fair to the Arsenal fans that were on the fence, that wasn't on display from the beginning of Raya's Arsenal career. Tough he came in keeper. He came in under loads of pressure because everybody was like, what is going on here? And all the media narrative was, Arteta's messed this up. He's upset the balance. He's, you know, he's upset the balance by bringing in Kai Havertz and now everyone loves Kai Havertz. He's upset the balance by bringing in David Raya. Over time, those decisions have proven to be good decisions. No, they were, they're, 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 they're proven to be correct. Well, Havertz still, let's, let's, oh, let's, let's, let's give it. No, it's not. It's not. What is it? Is that it? Is that Havertz's job done? No, it's no, not job so done, exactly... but he's done enough now to, to justify the signing. Okay, that's up to you. You're an Arsenal fan. He's done much better and there shouldn't be any criticism of Kai Havertz. That's as far as I would go. But with the Raya one, as soon as you guys put him on loan, I think we had we done numerous uh, segments on it when mm. we said, uh, that's Ramsdale gone. And obviously some Arsenal fans were like, no, why can't you accept we've got two keepers? And we were like, do you remember we had this conversation? Like, no, you don't. You have one number one and you'll have a clear number two. And if there's... If there's uncertainty, then one will go and has to go. Obviously, Ramsdale's going to go. But I wanted to bring back the Arteta comments, you guys. Do you remember, like, oh, if I have to make a substitution, was he just blatantly lying? And well, he couldn't make a substitution on Saturday because Raya was ineligible. 
No, the he penalty shootout. Do you remember he said, like, I want to be able to be make if I yeah, need to make maybe, a penalty shootout? Yeah, maybe, but he obviously felt that Raya could do the job. I and didn't realise how good Raya was at penalty. He was, it, th- those saves were brilliant. By the way, brilliant. Diego Costa, please, man, you know, I'm the most overrated. Like, he was so blown up to be this supreme penalty stopper. He has a good did you, record in Did you see penalties. him do- <laughs> dive in the same direction every <laughs> single penalty? And the one he didn't, Saka just made him stand still. I'll tell you where I give him Awful. credit, though. He's very comfortable on the ball. Bloody yeah, yeah, like lovely. in the first half, every time Porto was starting to get under a pressure, yeah, it was Otavio left centre back would get the ball, and he knew that Diego Costa was inside of him, and he just rolled the ball into yeah. him. He put his foot on it very calmly and confidently, and get them going again. The thing with the thing with the the Raya Ramsdale stuff is like what, what I was really happy to see. Not only was Raya making saves and you know proving his worth, I loved the way Aaron Ramsdale reacted to it because a lot of people have been like, you know, he's been a bit of a sore loser if you like the fact that he's lost his place I think his dad has been to be fair <laughs> his dad did um, a podcast no he, he, <laughs> he didn't but the, the the fact that during the, the sort of preparation for the shootout did you see Ramsdale kind of like making sure that no one was watching Raya yeah, studying yeah, yeah. the notes and then he goes and gives him like a massive hug when, when he comes a hero I like that love I like get that. the contract extension out <laughs> spirit passion on, on Ramsdale where, where does he go I don't know I don't know and do you he stays in England where Ch- Chelsea, 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 Chelsea really, really is the only keeper. one Ch- yeah. Chelsea that would be hilarious if he goes to Chelsea is there another one. club that's obvious Even, maybe like a Brighton I think they'll pay like they just bought um, Verbruggen mm. like you know, he's 20, 21. But even if somebody paid 20 million for Ramsdale, you've got the majority of your Raya money there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and there's no problems with... Yeah, but you, pay, you paid 35 for him. 30 for, for Ramsdale. For Ramsdale, yeah, yeah. But we got two years use out of him as well. It wasn't like... Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, a couple, couple, yeah. couple of comments. Uh, super chat from Phil. Uh, <laughs> last time Arsenal in quarterfinals, qu- uh, Declan Rice was Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant chat today. I'll tell you what, the chat's on fire Tell you what, the chat's today. on absolute fire today. Um, someone made a great point, Alejandro, that Rye just needed time to adjust to life at a bigger club. It's normal, especially, I guess, when the scrutiny compared to... Brent you don't get time off. nowadays, but that, I, I agree with that. But you don't mm. get time nowadays, do you? Um, yeah, I wanted to touch on a bit of Arteta and a bit of Conte Sal. Oh, go on. So Conte go Sal claimed Arteta insulted his family post-match. Um, Arsenal and Arteta adamantly denied that was the case. Porto, with a bit of context, tries to disrupt behind the scenes uh, with Arsenal. Team sheets late, the formations weren't submitted on time to UEFA. But Conte Sal does have form for this. He's done it before um, after games when, when he doesn't get his own way. He's, he does kick up a fuss, Harry. But your, your take on that, because it seems like Arteta has completely denied it. It just seems like Conte Sal doing what he's done before. Forgive me, but I'm going to have a bit of a rant here. Yeah, because Sergio Conte Sal was acting like a child from the first whistle so petulant not just him his staff as well um there was one particular member of staff that kept getting up kept getting told to sit down by the fourth official because only <laughs> one's allowed in the, he, was, he it, it, the guy was giving me like jason tyndall vibes like he was that kind of assistant um he's he's giving it all game conse sal he's throwing his arms up in the air he's getting in players way when they're trying to keep the ball in in play by sort of being right on the border of the pitch he does all of that and then He's got the audacity to come out and basically complain about there being maybe a bit of needle between the two dugouts. I thought that was ridiculous, to be honest with you. Um, as you say, he's got previous of doing it. What does does all the managers get together and decide, you know, that fella, wind him up about his family because that really gets under his skin. No, the guy's a baby. The guy's a child. Um, it was the first point that he wanted to make in his press conference. And I love the way Arteta handled it because he just said no comment. Like He doesn't need to say anything. He, mm. and, and if you watch the pictures afterwards of Conce Sal going over to Arteta after the game and like obviously having a word, Arteta genuinely looks like he doesn't have a clue. What you, He's like, mate, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. He's literally like, sorry, what? And he refused to shake hands as well. Yeah, yeah, I will. Oh. Sal, the best, Sal sorry. <laughs> Scott's lost it. <laughs> he also, oh yeah. Conce, Conce Sal though. hasn't been fed meat by Salt Bay though. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's gonna, the one that's I'm salty, gonna, funny enough. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with Harry. Like, so, you know, Conte Sal's proper. You can tell he's like from the, the Jose Mourinho school of yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, dark hearts and all of that business. And apparently, afterwards, it was confirmed. It's like one of those. There was not, it was like a normal swear word that if you want to take it literally and then tell him that <coughs> the, the 
person that he's <coughs> referring to is no longer with us, then yeah, a lot of a lot of gymnastics and mental right, gymnastics okay. involved. So he's twisted it a little to bit. Twist it a bit right, to get okay. offended, you know what I mean? So yeah, and you can see from Arteta's um, response that what are you talking Has about? Has Arteta and ever also, had, a, had a problem with another manager post match? Not, not, not post match, like. Also, as well, Marcy put in the comments, Arteta acts like a child nearly every game, man. Come on. Yeah, Arteta does push the boundaries. But have you ever heard Arteta go in a press conference afterwards and say, oh, he offended me? It's no, more the referees no, of Arteta. He's never done that. Um, because it's, it happens. I wanted to really talk well. more about Arsenal's performance because it felt like, I mean, as you said, Harry, Porto defended really well. But mostly that I found quite impressive was the way they nullified Saka. I thought Wendell did really well and Darren Fletcher was basically selling him live on commentary by saying any club over Europe should be having a look at this guy and also Porto's right back as well Jean Maria Jean Maria that's the one both of them did really well but then it was that bit of quality I mean Ali McCoy was losing it on commentary about Odegaard's assist <laughs> I thought that was I'm not in terms of bits of skill this season it was such a clever bit of bit of play but and we said that a great bit of great bit of finishing from, from Trossard as well but yeah what did, what did you make of Arsenal's overall performance Harry? It wasn't great. Um, but did it matter? No, it didn't. It didn't matter. But the, the thing, the important thing to note is that you never felt like Arsenal were going to concede either. Right. So although you can talk about yeah. it maybe not being as, you know, good on the sort of front foot, they weren't ever really in any danger. There was no period in that game where I thought that Porto were going to score or that there was ever any real danger of that. Um, you're right about their fullbacks. They were both unreal. I've said it to you guys before. I think Trossard's the best finisher at Arsenal and he gets that opportunity and he takes it. And the assist is just not only the bit of skill to shake off the player that's on him, but it's also the way he's like, he opens up his foot as if he's going to play the pass wide. And then he sort of reverses it mm. right at the right time where the, it's too late for anyone to change direction. And he feeds it into that inside channel for Trossard. It's just so good. Um, was the timing of the goal as well, just lastly on, on this one? Because it felt like at that point of the game, if, if it had gone into half time, but still with Porto leading... I don't know, just from the outside, Harry, and correct me if I'm wrong here, it felt a bit tetchy in the Emirates, watching on. It felt a little bit like everyone was on edge a little bit, and the longer the game went on, people are going to get worried that Arsenal aren't going to get back into the game. Was the timing of it actually the most crucial thing? It was important, because you get it before half-time, it changes the, the sort of the tone of the game, but I wasn't at that point yet then. Like I, was, I wouldn't have gone in at half-time going, we're not going to do this. Like I felt like we still had enough in the tank to make it happen, but yeah, of course, you get it before half-time. But it's funny because... Everybody at half time should have been buzzing because we just leveled the tie, but instead everyone was nervous, was angry. Oh, angry. because the referee somehow Leandro Trossard's older brother, uh, Clement oh, uh, fan looks exactly like him, Frightening. father and son of yeah. the United, <laughs> He added one minute of stoppage time. Now, Porto spent at least 15 minutes of that first half yeah, taking throw ins alone. That was crazy. And he added one minute. And all of us were like, what? Like, we've scored. It don't really matter. But one minute. Like, yeah. where yeah. is that? I, I, I want to speak on Odegaard. I think he's been fantastic, especially the last couple of months. He's really stood up. So, you know, all of all of the teams that we speak on, like, in title charges, need someone to stand up. Sort of, you know, the fault we've spoken about, Fold and how he stood up, you know, and really been counted. I think, I think Odegaard's been that guy. I think there was a couple that weren't great yesterday. I know Harry said no one was poor. Uh, you know, I think there was a couple not to. The, I don't think Jorginho had his best game. I agree with that. I so I don't think Saka had his best game, but I thought Odegaard and that moment and his play. I mean, if if we take away if we take away his uh, every thirty second cheerleading, like <laughs> I am not having a Liverpool fan telling me about cheerleading <laughs> no and one, fist pumps. No one. Does this that. means more to us than anybody else. Apparently. What, it, what, what, I mean, what, what cheerleading we talk about, Chris? Just for people, you know don't. the one I'm talking no, about. No, go on. No. Do, do we need a reenactment? <laughs> no, no, we don't. But, I did say someone. But, I did see someone tweet expected hair flicks. Fair play to him. Do it down the camera now. Every every corner. Every. Like, Is like, it, you know like, <laughs> like the stream. Come on, <laughs> but um, but his performance, you know, just when they needed it, he stood up, uh, and then he's and he's floating around in that sort of half spaces. I think he's been brilliant. Um, he's really showing his like sort of all that potential that everyone saw saw with him at an early age. He's actually fulfilling it now, and I think the captain giving him the captaincy was a masterstroke as well, because. Um, and, and there's quite a few experienced players there now, in, in that squad now. And, you know, he's, 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 he's a leader, he's a captain, and he's performing in the big games. Scott, yeah. if you're an Arsenal fan, who do you want in the next round of the Champions League? <sighs> I think 
I think maybe Dortmund are the, probably the weakest yeah. team left. I don't know why I think they're getting Dortmund. I literally said that to my mate this morning. He goes, "Who do you think we're gonna get?" I said, "Well, this is just gonna, a hunch." I'm not ITK in the Champions League. Is yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say is that, is that he's calling you. And he, goes, and he goes, <laughs> and he goes, and I said, "I got a feeling you're gonna get Arsenal." And he's like, oh, "I'll take that." And you just said the same yeah. thing. Well, I think they're the best team that Arsenal could get left because I think they're probably the easiest team to score against. Really, most beatable. Most of the other teams that are in there, obviously, I don't think you want City. No, really. Way. Um, most of the other teams in there are just that, like, not elite level. Like, there's a lot of elite teams in there. Um, but, you know, they're kind of like big, big name ties. And maybe Dortmund are a tier below that. The one I think you want to avoid is Atletico Madrid, to be honest. Because I think they'll do what Porto did, but a lot better. Is that after watching the game last night? Yeah. Yeah. Because, Harry, you said to me that you've that's an intimidating place to go. Yeah. Away. And particularly the second legs there, I think, as well. And I think styles make ties as well as anything else. Like, for example, you look at Barcelona and you think, you know, it's Barcelona. But I think stylistically, that's quite a good matchup. Yeah. I think... I think you'd... Uh, oh, go on, sorry. You think we'd smash them? Oh, mate. Mate, mate. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying it anyway. Atletico like, or... Barcelona. No, 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 Barcelona. Okay. Oh, Barcelona. Oh, the I've, worst Man United team in history beat Barcelona Dortmund. last year. So. I know you said Dortmund, and even though I thought said I thought Dortmund would be, I think it would be an entertaining game. The atmosphere at Dortmund would be amazing as well. Barcelona would be the one. If I was an Arsenal fan, I'd want Barcelona. Barcelona. All Barcelona day long. next round. Did you guys catch the Atletico game? Yeah. Yeah, I saw yeah. the uh, last. Well, from seventy minutes. Oh, like the hero, but Lautaro Martinez's <laughs> penalty is one of the worst. It was like someone I've said, "Go and do your best Roberto Baggio impression," and that's what he went. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw someone tweet yesterday because um, he had a great season, doesn't he? But when the world's watching, <laughs> he just tends to like freeze. Yeah, freeze or mess up. Or has he ever or had a big moment in a big game like when it's like when the world's watching? Yes, he, domestically he's had a good season. Inter, even though they're not going to win the league, are they? There they are. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. They're going to wipe the floor Inter, with the league. Yeah. Sorry, but yeah, this was it. Every, into what everyone's not dark horses because they reached the Champions League final last mm. season but everyone was like they're the ones that can really rival it just it goes to show Man you City. that it's just like the Champions League is is just like that it's big occasions every side that's in this stage is there on merit you're going away you're playing in different atmospheres you're playing different styles like Atletico you can say what you want about them nah, about where they are in La Liga yeah, it's yeah. Atletico Madrid under the greatest housery expert we've maybe yeah, ever yeah, yeah. seen as a manager I'd say even surpasses Mourinho in that that's a big shout maybe but I think he's up there Like, yeah. and also it's interesting because we, we were talking about it the other day about away goals and actually if away goals were in play Inter scoring the first goal last night destroys that tie mm. it's done yeah true but so do you think it's actually for the good though? It, it, well it keeps the second legs alive when they could right. sometimes be dead yeah and like all works of both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, works both ways. So Scott's for Arsenal. Let, let's know Arsenal fans in the comment section who you want in the next round. Scott thinks Dortmund's the best shout. Uh, Barca, Atletico, and PSG are on the poll in the in the live chat. Harry, looking at looking at that quarterfinal, I have to say, in terms of lineup, that's one of the best quarterfinal lineups in the Champions League I've seen for a long time. Well, everyone in was moaning. Quality. Everyone was moaning about the round of sixteen. Well, this is what you get. So it, there's a trade. Quality's good. Was there a, a tie that didn't go as you expected? The Inter Atletico one didn't go the way. Maybe. I predicted to Napoli to beat Barca, actually. Yeah, I thought Napoli had a chance, but Nah, Barca. Is. See, I disagree. I think I, I disagree with Jake's take about the quality. I think the quality is not great. I think the names. Well, let's are run there. through the teams, then, I think the names are there, but I think Man City are ahead. What's the Chelsea. quality like in the Europa League? It's decent. Leverkusen, best team in Europe. Bundesliga clear. Uh, Liverpool, Roma, Liverpool, Liverpool t t joint I just top. about got a Roma Carabag the other day. Anyway, so there you go. Know. There's your answer. Liverpool's <laughs> in the best team in Europe. But um, but yeah. So um, I think the Champions but, League. Oh, I think quality. You look at the last eight, Chris. I think. Like, who's, 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 but, no, but in terms of what Chris is saying, well? in terms of what Chris is saying, I agree. Like that, the status of the club is there. But the status of the club. Do you are think there? any of those teams are really fav like? Do you think Real Madrid knock out Man City? No, probably not, because City smashed them last season. Like. City is so clearly above everybody. Else. Honestly, it's got nothing Maybe to do with Arsenal Liverpool. Honestly, I'm not. I'm, I'm serious. It's got nothing to do with Liverpool because we're not at the peak of our powers either as a club, right? But those clubs are not at the but peak you beat of their City powers. At the weekend, one one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing my lines now, and see what I'm saying. <laughs> so, Chris, what you're saying is the Europa League this season is a more exciting competition did, than the Champions League. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't say that. Don't do that. 
I didn't say that at all. What I'm saying is the pe- the the status of the clubs, like Scott says, is there. The names are there, but none of those clubs. I think even Man City are at the peak of their powers. And that's why I've said for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, I make Arsenal second favourites. But what, when, I've got, I've got to put you up on that, Chris, because mm-hmm. when have we seen in the Champions League loads of team at the peak of their powers? Oh, and, so and in a time. long time ago. A long time ago, yeah, sure. We're talking, you know, a decade ago. But I think recently there's never been many teams at the peak of the powers. You think of Real Madrid. We've had, we've had Real Madrid. A couple and of teams. We've had Real, we've had, but in, I think in, that makes it better though, Chris. We've got, it's such an open playing field that I can actually... Is it open though? It's not Is open. It really open. I think it's open. I think Arsenal have got a good chance. I think Real have a good chance. I think City have a good chance. Who's your favourite? Real, my favourites. The reason it's really? o- the reason it's open is because <laughs> it's a cup and there's going to be a draw. Oh, Man City, and the draw Martin. can, yeah, of course, the draw can make it open. Like if they pair Real Madrid and Man City in the next round, if, who do you think is the best equipped to beat I Man get City? That. Maybe Real Madrid. I agree with that. If you pair them two together, that can go no, either no, way. No, no, no. I agree. Man City are my favourites no, to win it. If, in my opinion, if you take away Man City, the other ties, I agree, could be. Could be close, and Barca could, be, could beat PSG. PSG could beat Barca, like Dortmund. But but could, they're, but they're not great. That's my point. They're not playing I great th- football. They're not a great. Remy says it reminds right me of the 2005-6. PSG are awful, and so are Barcelona, for example. But go back four or five Barcelona years. Barcelona and PSG were at their peaks. PSG had Messi, Suarez. Who's the other fellow? Neymar. You know these. You talking about players. one team that Chris. I'm talking about. I'm talking about a few, but you didn't listen. Well, I'm listening. I'm going through some. Napoli were at their peak. Few few seasons ago, even Barcelona had a far better squad than they had they've got right now. So you know, I'm just saying it's it's the names are there. Bayern the are like the there. weakest version. Bayern, of Bayern it's the weakest Although, version. Although don't sleep of on them. I I I still think Bayern are one to. It's the weakest version Bayern. of all those teams I can remember. But last last week, yeah. apart from Arsenal, who are at their peak. Last so they week, should win. everyone was sleeping on on Atletico and saying that Inter were going to wipe the floor with them because Inter except are me flying. Loads of people were saying it because Inter were fly, are flying domestically, beaten one 0 in the first leg, and people were saying to me this week, Inter are maybe the third best team in Europe. I said they're, they're cruising the Scudetto and they're one 0 up in their time, maybe. But look how it can flip. Mm. One night, nice my point. Never never and never you're done. Arsenal that. through, Atletico Madrid through, Barca through, Dortmund through, and a man who did get on the score sheet just to wrap up on the Champions League was Jadon Sancho, and uh, the Dortmund manager mentioned about sort of. The best version of Jaden Sancho is when he's got a smile on his face playing football. Congrats to him. I, I hope he has a fantastic season. Someone made a good point that United are paying his wages whilst he's playing in the Champions League and scoring. Whilst he's playing at a high level. Yeah. Well, well he is. Yeah. You, can't, you can't get away from that fact at the moment. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, he came into United and posted something against his manager because <laughs> he didn't want to work hard enough in training. There we have it. And so, it, it, if he can have a fantastic, if he can win the Champions League with Dortmund and United can sell him for 80 million quid, fantastic. 80 million? They paid 70. 8 million? If they can sell him for a bloody 40 million at no, the moment, fantastic achievement. 40. Fantastic achievement. Um, shout out to Marco Royce as well, because I, I forgot how many injuries this guy's had. And he's still such an important player for Dortmund. He's that sort of talismanic figure. I think Dortmund were lucky last night. No, they were lucky. Right. The first half they were, they were on the front foot, second half they dropped off. And I think they were, PSV had chances, didn't they? Mm. But Mark, I think Marco Royce is a lovely story, Harry. It is a nice story, yeah, because he's a super talented player. But so you're saying PSV deserves to go through? In my opinion, yeah. In terms of quality? In terms of the overall well. balance of the two ties, in terms of the chances. But PSV are like that, man. They're, they're, so, they're so good at creating. They lack the killer instinct. And defensively, they are... What was the score on aggregate? 2-1, two, 3-1. What, no, in your two games with them. Oh, we, I think we put five past them in the home game. Are you listening to away. this, Jakey? So they put five past PSV and then three at home, I think, or three away or something no, like no, that? No, 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 no. We drew away. Drew away. So they put five past and PSV. Yeah, and, and, we didn't go through. and now we're saying PSV were unlucky not to beat Dortmund. Yeah, that's one and team, Dortmund That's one team. It's not, I could tell you them loads. Barcelona got pumped by one of the worst Man United squads in recent history. Do you what see where I'm going that? with this? Last year. Last year. No, but do you see where I'm going with this? We're talking about this year, though, aren't we? Look, I'm not saying I'm not saying that PSG, Barca, Barca are worse this year. Dortmund than last are at the peak year. of their All powers, of but I think it's an open playing field between Arsenal, Man City, Real Madrid. Yeah, look, I agree. It's an open playing field apart from Man City. That's why it's one of the most exciting Champions Leagues in, in years. No, nah, man. From now, it gets exciting. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, th- exactly. I think What's the, I, I've, I've said that the Champions League quarter final in terms of entertainment. Okay, you changed it. Yeah, you know, changed no, it no, no, no. I said, I said that. Entertainment wise, Reg- no problem. Rajesh says, could Quality be an wise. interesting set of games. I would like to see Barca v Dortmund, Atletico City, PSV Bayern, PSG Bayern, and Real Arsenal. Oh, 
Uh, you want to avoid They've been giving it the big one about Real Madrid, so we'll see. Trip to the Bernabeu, give it to me. <laughs> right, we'll move on to a bit of... We've done Champions League, we've done a bit of a bit of Championship Premier League as well. <laughs> We're going to move on to the FA Cup. Make sure to leave a like on the video. We've just got below a 1,000 of you watching at the moment. So leave a like on the video, subscribe to 90 Min. Follow the guys on their social channels. <laughs> Just get those likes up as quickly as possible. Get a hair flick in there as well. Uh, FA Cup, Man United. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enough here. Man United versus Liverpool. Only you can do that one. Um, yeah, do you know what? You can do that. No, I can't do a Martin Odegaard. He's, he's, yeah, he's, you, you've he's got the most Odegaard-like yeah. hair. Yeah, you have. Maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, Give it one of these, go on. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Stop it. You've got to get the hand shape right. It's like, got to be like a fork. You? <laughs> Have you ever seen him giving one of them and then one of them? Yeah, yeah. It's always, oh, loads. Yeah. It's, no, no it's, it's all in one movement. It goes... Like <laughs> it's all one movement. <laughs> Michael Edwards returning, Grizz. Yeah, great stuff. How you feeling? Um, yeah, look, they had to pull something out of the bag to sort of, um, you know, keep the spirits raised after the Jurgen Klopp news. Um, so the story's come out that we've been trying forever, forever to bring him back. He kept saying no, 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 until we've kind of given him the literally the keys to the kingdom. We've made him not only not a footballing di- football director, but he's an actual sporting director of all things football related to not just Liverpool but FSG. Um, people need to realise that he's actually employed by FSG, not Liverpool, um, which is fine. Uh, before people start saying, "Oh my God, oh my God, what does that mean?" Nothing really. I don't know why I just said that. But fanta- look, fantastic track record, done brilliant things. Um, left, left in slightly, slightly um, shadowy circumstances in terms of there was a little bit of a, not falling out with Jürgen Klopp, but sort of Jürgen Klopp wanted a bit more power than, than he had. And Michael Edwards felt that he deserved all the power. Well, now FSG have said, all right, with no Jurgen Klopp... Did he know he was getting tired? Is that why? Nah, it's not that. And now Michael Edwards is coming back. A lot of Liverpool fans are very, very excited. He's going to bring in Richard Hughes, the Bournemouth uh, director of football, who, let's be honest, Bournemouth have stayed in the Premier League how long now? And punching above their weight, right? And that's down to being smart in the in the in the business in the transfer market, and that's what Liverpool hope that he's going to bring on to obviously a bigger, larger scale. You know, some cynics in the Liverpool fan base are saying, "Ah, oh, see that they're bringing in someone who's used to working with a budget and buying bargains." Take it. That's how FSG that's how operate. You have to do that's it how anyway. they, that's how they operate. FSG. That's how, you have that's to how do they it. operate. And so we're basically trying to build that house again. Uh, with Edwards at the helm fully this time. Um, So Richard Hughes is going to be sort of working under Michael Edwards, who's the CEO, who's essentially replacing Mike Gordon, who was the, you know, the the, the CEO of Liverpool. How do you feel about the second club? Because obviously he he put that in his statement as well, didn't he? Yeah, look, it's... A part of the appeal, just for people I haven't seen, part of the appeal is... FSG, we know, we know. It's not... I'm not a favour of it, personally, but... I'm not a businessman and I'm not sort of in charge of Liverpool trying to expand my portfolio on business. That's what FSG are. That's what the, the people in charge of Man City are and even Arsenal. These, 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 these people will eventually go towards that. Uh, the top, top clubs will eventually go towards that and we're trying to get a, a head start in it. It is what it is. I don't know how it's going to pan out, how it's going to work out. As I said, you know, all the morals and ethics of it I don't know how it's going to pan out. The multi-club model is is becoming pretty popular, mm. to be honest. I mean, pretty much, well, I say pretty much every club, but I'm just thinking of clubs that don't have it. Arsenal. Really. Arsenal's probably won. No, we've got, they've got MLS clubs. They've got the, Col- is it Colorado Rapids, I want to say? Okay, is that what fair, enough, fair enough. Yeah. One of the most successful Where we signed. models was the uh, Pozzo model of what <laughs> in Granada. Don't do it like that. <laughs> Where we no. signed uh, the legend that is um, Austin Trusty from. Is that, yeah. is that what they're called? Oh, yeah, it's I can't Sheff- even... He's at Sheffield United. Colorado now, Rapids. Yeah. Uh, Hackham, no, sorry, Big Man Andy, great to see you, mate. Uh, some of his signings at Bournemouth, Ake, Solanke, Sensei and Neto. He's, he's had more than that, but that's some of his signings. Some of, the, some of the better ones. Yeah. He's had, he's had some good ones. Um, um, Scott, the cynic in you, is there anything that you look at this move from Liverpool that you don't think is right? No, I, th- I, think, um, I think it's the right way to go, to be honest. Like I think if we've learned anything over the past few years, and if, in, I'll take Liverpool's case, like the fact that they didn't sign Caicedo and now you sign Endo for 18 million quid. I know it's a short-term signing, but 
you don't have to spend 100 million every time and i I know fans are like desperate for that kind of fix of oh we spent 90 million on this player who's going to be the best player ever but usually like how many of those transfers actually work you know i think liverpool have to be sensible maybe mo salah goes you know in the summer so maybe they they have some they'll have some money to play with there but you've got a the way liverpool have got good is by I think that moment where they sold Coutinho for all that money and then they made two smart signings or three smart signings to take them up to the next level. That's the way you got to keep people, going. People have only obviously spoke about his incomings in terms of transfers, but he's been in a magnificent seller yeah. in terms of outgoings as well. And Coutinho being obviously the most famous example. But he sold, <laughs> he sold Solanke to them. He sold uh, there's oh, a left you back robbed Paul Brad Solanke. Brad right. Brad Smith not so much Brad now. Smith not he so much sold now, to them by that point, 17 million uh, uh, Ryan Brewster to yeah. Sheffield United I mean we we made so much money from this fella uh, he's 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 been brilliant for Liverpool in the past we're hoping that he can continue um, in the future Chris, how much influence does he have on the next manager I think he has Iriola. I think he has brilliant brilliant influence I think he has Massive influence. Does it change the dynamic of this next Liverpool manager? Who we think it will be? Uh, in? No, I don't think so. I think there's a there's a clear one and two choices. Which is uh, two. Amrim. Like clear, like some people are suggesting that because Amrim's more data analytical based, it will appeal to Edwards far more. Um, but I still believe Alonso is is going to be the Liverpool manager. Uh, Jakey, the the chat had taken the mick out of you for saying sensei, not senesi. My apologies. <laughs> sensei is like a karate master. No, there yeah. is there is a sense book, sensei. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there is an Italian sense. Is, is, is oh, my sen- game, sen- that is real. Oh, I remember yeah. when I called um, uh, Sarabia Sarabia. <laughs> that's all right. That's, <laughs> that's, not, bad. that's <laughs> not bad. That's embarrassing for me. <laughs> that's apologies. not bad. That's really bad. Um, do you know what we wanted to just just do we touch on Michael Edwards? Um, bit of chat going into this one Man United versus Liverpool I guess the question is and Harry I think you're best placed to answer this which team has more riding on this game what a good question Ooh, um, I think you've got to say Man United because I don't nothing think nothing else left yeah I don't, <laughs> I don't think they're going to make the top four Sorry. Liverpool have already won a cup competition this season um, and of course they're they're in a good position to contend for the Premier League and the Europa League so yeah you've got to say Man United because Eric Ten Hag has to show something to the new part owners in order for him to kind of convince them that he's the man for them. <coughs> Would an FA Cup be enough to, to, to prove? Maybe in, not. If, if you're sat there as Jim Ratcliffe, Dave Brailsford, and uh, United come away from the season with an FA Cup, is that enough to justify keeping him for another If season? I was them, I'd have already been making phone calls for my replacement. Like, would I wouldn't be surprised the way Ratcliffe operates in all of his other business models. Yeah, if I was Ratcliffe, I'd have already put the feelers out to get a new manager in. And as I said a couple of weeks ago on here, it's not even just because Eric Ten Hag is bad. Like, I don't think he's as good as some United fans will have you believe. But I also think that sometimes you just need a reset and there's collateral damage in that and he's going to be that, unfortunately. A super chat from Philippe. Thanks so much, mate. Uh, Man United beat Liverpool. Liverpool two wins versus Man United 103 years in the FA Cup. Might have to get that. that how many that times have they played? Um, <laughs> I don't know how many games we're talking about there. But 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 just on that, um, Scott Ten Hag, is this is this sort of make or break from the FA Cup? Is that what you've got to play for? Because if we're honest, top four is looking well. Top five, it could be. It might be tight. I don't think it's purely down to this. Okay. Um, I think he's got to show enough in the league as well. I think they've got to finish the league season strongly. They can't just keep losing as many games as they're losing in the in the league. But there's no doubt, obviously, if he goes and beats Liverpool and everybody is really up for it and they show a bit of fight, that can lift the whole club, especially going into an international break. And he probably needs that as a, as a manager as well. Um, they did it last time. Was it last time Liverpool came to Old Trafford? United beat them. Yeah. And nobody expected them to beat them. They, they just lost 4-0 at Brentford. So, you know, he's done it before. Um, but yeah, he does need to, like Harry says, he does need to prove himself. He does need to make a statement really with his team that, you know, I've still got these guys fighting for me and they need to display that in this game. Because if they don't, they're going to get battered. Are Liverpool going to rotate, Grizz? Yeah. A lot? No. 
No, a lot. Are you not going to go the reason, You don't have another game. The reason for... why we're not going to rotate a lot is because we we've, we don't have another game for the, before the international break. But we're still carrying a couple of injuries and we're gonna, we've obviously we've got a game tonight. So it's not going to be a fully rotated team, but it's going to be a, like a... It's not going to be full strength. Where is he not at a full strength? No, they're not. No, would you? Would, like Ten Hag's option at the minute, is he going to go for the full strength options? That oh, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely go for as strong as he's got but he's missing the entire left side of his defence like he's been missing all season Hoyland might be back Hoyland will be back actually um, which is a plus so we'll see how whether he goes back to that front line of Garnacho right Rashford left and Hoyland through the middle um, but yeah I, I said all season I think Martinez being, being out although he'd be back for the, the Brentford game after the international break I, th- I think he's such a big miss if you ask if you ask me like sort of because obviously we play them in a few weeks time in the league as well is yeah, it abs- it's about three weeks, three weeks yeah, or something. It's right? absolutely no doubt for me. I couldn't, no, I couldn't care about the FA Cup, but it's, I said a free hit and you all laughed at me, but it's kind of, I'm feeling relaxed about it. But how I'm not, can you, no, how no, can you have I mean? been so gassed about the League Cup, but then not care about the FA Cup? No, no, I don't one, get that. Because the timing and the injuries and how it's building up. So we can't afford to, so we can't afford to go, if we went full strength, if everything was fine and our squad was fine, I would say, yeah, let's go and win that as well. Of course I want to beat Man United. Of course I want to win the FA Cup. I love day out at Wembley. It's magnificent. But what I'm saying is, I won't be distraught, and I'm not nervous as I will be for the league game. For the league game, it's going to be this is it. Yeah, you yeah, know, do you get it? So like, I'm going to Old Trafford. I'm not going to Old Trafford, but um, this game, this game on Sunday, it's like it's going to watch it and enjoy it and see how we do. A couple of squad players, you know, and enjoy it. It's it's not a Liverpool Man United atmosphere vibe to it. Right, for okay. me, so this is, for this me, is a lovely segue. Segway. And let us know in the comment section. It, we'd love to get your takes, and we'll read them out as many as possible. Does this game, Man United versus Liverpool, as a rivalry, mean as much as it used to, Scott Saunders? I think it does, but I don't think the rivalry is balanced. Okay. Um, I think. Do you think it's the biggest game in Liverpool season? Not this game specifically, but the United fixtures. Yeah, cool. You know, in that, that one, and against City, you feel like, oh God, that's the day where we have to test ourselves. But like, when you think of like the rival, it's still United. Is it the one you look out for when the fixtures come out? That's always the cliche, isn't it? Which is the one that you look at as United fans? Is it Liverpool, home and away? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, in terms of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that cat outside again? <laughs> yeah, but... Um, for me, it's Man City because of the relevance to it right now. But in terms of rivalry and sort of hatred and all that, yeah, of course, it's Man United. Yeah, it's still going to be Man United. I, yeah, I think Old Trafford would be up for it as well. Um, because they need to, like like I say, they need to they need to pull something out of the bag. Um, because since, obviously, Liverpool came to Old Trafford and won 5-0, right? It was 15 years ago to the day that they won 4-1 four, four, in Old Trafford as well. Great lob by Andre Desainer, by the way. Underrated goal. Yeah. I hated it. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've also beat United 7-0. So I think that this United squad have an inf- something of an inferiority complex against Liverpool that they need to bat aside. And I don't know whether it's Klopp's Liverpool. No, but you've done, you've done well. So you've got a draw at Anfield and you beat us the last time we were at Trafford. So it's, yeah. it's coming round. Yeah. But like... Yeah, I suppose, yeah, I suppose that's a good point. But yeah. like, do do these players think? Do they have the utmost confidence that they can go out and beat Liverpool? Like, I think that's what I want to. That's what I want to see. I want to see a bit of a, a confidence and a game plan to say like, all right, we can not necessarily go go toe to toe. I'm not going to say go play free flow and attacking football. But I want to see like commitment. And why I point to Martinez is because in that game, like early on, Martinez crunched Salah. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. And like Salah got up, he just laughed at him, and Martinez was just stood there like. No, I'm I'm here. Like we're gonna we're gonna do you today, and they won. Now he typifies the attitude that I want to see, and he's not there. And I feel like in terms of like leaders on the pitch, I think he is he has that right attitude, and I can't wait for him to come back. But they don't have him. We've got Lindelof at left back probably, um, and whoever's gonna play alongside him. I think Varane and maybe Maguire is on the fringes, but maybe Johnny Evans will play because he looks the most composed centre back at the moment. Um, but they need to. These players need to prove, because these players are playing for their futures as well. They need to prove that they can they can hang. They need to prove that they deserve to be here next season, and they need to prove it in every game, especially this one. <laughs> Aman actually said as soon as you mentioned Lindelof, Lindelof at left back, Scott. 
dot 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 nightmares. <laughs> no, 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 I know. I know. No, he's done well, man. Harry, you just got mentioned about sort of the confidence going into this sort of game. Is that down to the manager? That sort of even even the basics in terms of, we mention as fans what we all want to see from our clubs: commitment, running, hard work, tackling, getting stuck in, etc. You know, the, that sounds pretty old. Pretty school. Brexit. Yeah, pretty <laughs> pretty old school. But the but it's is, basics. But I think that I think the basics comes down to the manager more than. And also, yeah, of course, I disagree. Of course, right. it's the players that execute it, but I think if you're a proper manager, and that's no disrespect to Senegal, but if you're a proper manager and you've got the the, the players on side, the basics just come. Yeah, you don't I, even have I, to. I, no, I, that's but, where I agree. Before before let, before you get into that, Oli said right that day that they lost five nil, he said right we're going to go and play them. We're going to go and play Man United football. Man United, whatever that bloody means. We're going to go and play them. They lost five nil. Got played off the park. Most of those players who were there that day are still there. They have previous, and I said this at the 7 0, obviously. They, people forget they, after 40 minutes, it was 0 0, you know? And then they capitulated in the second half. They lost their heads completely because Liverpool, a couple of years ago, had managed to stuff them at Old Trafford. And it happened again. Like, I feel like they have a lot of hangover from the way that they played that day, which probably goes into like future matches. So I think a lot of that is out of Ten Hag's hands. I think that if you respect your manager, you do the basics. Like I really because and that's in any walk of life. Like I think if you if you are not like if you don't fear any consequences, therefore you don't respect your manager, then that's the only time where those standards will drop completely. Like we talk about footballers a lot and we say, you know, he's lazy or he's this and he's that. You don't get to that point. You don't get to the point where you play for Manchester United if you're not incredibly hard working, driven, focused, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I don't believe that when they get to Man United, this switch flicks and it's like, I don't need to do anything anymore. I think if you have a manager that you respect and you're fully on board with, the basics will come. And that's another sign for me as to why Ten Hag and Oli before him and Rangnick before him, none of them were ever the right guy. So you don't so, think there's a common theme? So this is where well, I, this Which is, is the first thing that the new yeah. guy is going to change. But someone has to come in that inspires and lifts them. I mean, if I were a Man United player... Clearly, that's above the manager, though, because would you not say Jose Mourinho was one of the best managers ever of getting his players on side? Yeah, but Man United were nowhere near as bad under Mourinho as they are today. They were awful, man. No, man. They were look at their awful. League, look at their league positions. They won trophies. They were they not... Were, they were sick when he got sacked. Mourinho, yeah, at that point where it had gone downhill. But the general Mourinho period was better than the Ten Hag period. For the, yeah, for, and, until that final season where all the players dropped off and they stopped caring about it. Because he lost... That, but then that means that Mourinho lost them but which he did. the fact that these players keep get keep losing like every manager that comes in there's generally a trend with every manager that says oh okay yeah i don't believe in this manager anymore i'm going to kind of give up and i'm not i don't think they're at that point yet i just think they i think there's a lot of damage there's a lot of cultural issues that are, go beyond the manager and the first thing that ratcliffe is going to do the, the first thing i've said to do for two years is sort out the culture and it goes above the manager because we've seen it happen so many times with uh, every manager that United have had at what point they let you, him down at what point are you willing to then judge the culture then does it take two, three years four years five probably. years probably they don't, like I say they need to shift the players that are in there earning a lot of money get out get they can't out. sell them okay the, the, the live chat was popping up but someone made a good point to Grizz's point about the atmosphere 9,000 Liverpool fans at Old Trafford it would definitely be some atmosphere obviously with the uh, added allocation for the FA Cup as well they'll make more noise than Old Trafford like the rest of Old Trafford they will because away fans are generally the hardcore depends how the right? game goes yeah maybe but away fans are generally the hardcore like so they're always going to be more vocal than most of the home sport in 99% of grounds. Mm. I honestly believe that. I do feel it does, there is something about Old Trafford as well. When the away fans are on it, just watching from home, I don't go to any games at Old Trafford. It does feel particularly loud from the away end. They give sense. a massive allocation though. It's obviously yeah, so the biggest club stadium in the country. It. Yeah. So double that normal allocation. Goodness me. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of chat from Jamie Carragher this week about uh, the Arsenal-Man United rivalry with Wenger and Fergie, the Liverpool-City rivalry with Pep and Klopp, and he claims that the City-Liverpool rivalry with Pep and Klopp is better, or is better now, than the Fergie-Wenger rivalry between Man United and, Liverpool, uh, Man United and Arsenal. What's better mean? What's, we've discussed this. What's better mean? Gary Neville terms... hit the nail on the head with this. Go on. Oh, go on. When he said that there was a five-year period, the peak of Arsenal-Man United rivalry, where Arsenal won the league twice and United won it three times. So it was like balanced. Mm. 
Manchester City have won the league every time in this rivalry, apart from once. In yeah, the COVID doors. season. Yeah. Mm. So in terms of really in, ter- in, ter- in terms of in terms of see that's the thing in it everything needs context. Which rivalry do you prefer then? I no, as I've I've grown up watching that rivalry and I've said I've said it on this show as well. I think that was the best era in terms of rivalry and um, I don't know how you want to like drama and sort of characters and personality. That, you know, Arsenal Man United was epic games and and and, and no shortage of quality as well, massive. But I think the the quality, just pure, based on the pure quality of the of the Liverpool and City area and the points totals, suggest that this is not a rivalry in terms of on that level in terms of fire and intensity, but on a footballing rivalry. It's, 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 it's a footballing, rivalry. I'll give you that. But to me, uh, to, to no be right, that's what I said. What's a rivalry? rivalry you I need get more that. More than that, yeah, you, I get you that. Need, you need a you bit need of needle. you need needle. I yeah. get that. That's what I mean. Fergie and Wenger hated each Can other. Can you imagine yeah. Fergie and sure. Wenger cuddling each other for? Yeah. Like well, I tell you what, though. I tell well, you what, it did happen eventually, didn't it? But that was when Wenger's Arsenal. But I tell you what, these are fake hugs though from Klopp and Pep. Like they don't, they respect each other, but they don't get on. So that's all a, that's all a. Yeah, I'd uh, say a hug is more respect than you like. I'd hug someone. No, I think Klopp just forces it. Really? Yeah, well, he forces a hug. Pep won't want to hug him. No, there must, there must be an element of like nah. admiration. For admiration, other, like. mutual respect. He says yeah, it. Pep says, Pep says, Pep says, Pep says, he goes, I would not you reach this. You can't get anyone, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He goes, I would not reach this level if it wasn't for Klopp in Liverpool. And look, these 90 plus points, it's never been done before. These five seasons of the aggregate, if you aggregate the, the total points needed to win the league, it's on a different stratosphere to the Man United Arsenal era. But in terms of rivalry, I absolutely get it. You need all of that to make a rivalry. These points things like, don't, don't make a difference to me. I know it doesn't. It does they to really me. Don't. So which is, uh, if you get like uh, the only one I'll say is like the Centurion season when they got a hundred. That that's kind of that's nah, 90, 96, like, 98. I could open a can of worms if do you want to. Go on. What's a more impressive achievement? City Centurions or Arsenal Invincibles? Invincibles. Easily. Mm. Easy. And it was natural. Yeah. I go for the points. You get the most points. You go for the most wins. You can get draws galore like they did in you know. Twelve. Yeah, it was twelve. 12 yeah. It, yeah, points always for me. And also, they, they did go, they did lose in the other competitions. Who are they? Yeah. They, well, the one. The, the, one <laughs> is the, the one point that people make is the fact that Arsenal had 11 draws. 12. 12, 12 draws. Yeah, yeah. It's... Our trophy's gold. No one else's. Your kit's also gold at this season. It's got it? a gold strike, yeah. Our, our trophy's gold. That's it. That's all I'll say. Done. Don't need to say anything else. It does. Me, it, 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 I was going to say it does mean more. <laughs> it means more to us. Yeah. Arsene Wenger is the better only manager in the history books that's gone a whole season in the Premier League unbeaten. That's and a poll there, Ben. And, uh, but I think that someone else could hit 100 points. Like Liverpool have come really close to it. I think Man someone City else could be unreasonable. We've had, we've had more 100 Liverpool, points yeah. Liverpool, than Liverpool have had one defeat all season. Man City have won. You can go invincible as well if you play for draws. But I just think no Pep one's and Klopp even, don't go no for draws. Even got Wenger went for draws. It. No one's ever got close to the invincible record. And let's not forget have, as well. Of course we have. No, you have Liverpool lost twi- two games in one yeah, season. But at Man what, City at what point one. in the season? Yeah. Because that's important as well. It's not it's just like about the how many defeats. the game or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That's, but the point no is, one's got but close the point to is, it. The point, is, the point is, as I've said, Wenger knew the title was done and started playing for draws. And that's fine. I'm not saying it's an... I'm not underplaying it. I'm just saying for me, the 100 points, and it's not my team that got the 100 points, it's a rival. And man. also, the other thing that... I think everyone it's a magnificent draws, achievement. That They went the, the whole season unbeaten. They also carried that over. So it's 49 in total. Nobody has and then anywhere and near then a run of the, 49 the games. The day unbeaten. that ended yeah, of was one of the biggest car crashes in terms of controversy. Mm. Yeah. In we Premier were, League history. Well, we were playing at Old Trafford. We knew it was coming before we even arrived there. So <laughs> it was, You had the narrative of Van Nistelrooy scoring the penalty the year after Keown celebrated in his face. Like drama. So much that drama. One of the so much days drama. Of your life? Well, United were crap that season, actually. I think they were like eighth in the league in that day. Um, and they needed to... But no, it was it was good fun. No, the I, drama I, I recorded was, it on VHS and watched it back a lot of times. It was proper, yeah. proper drama. How old were you then? Uh, 20? No, 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 how old do you think I am? <laughs> 15, 16? He's not he's only 28. 15, 16? Maybe. Um, should we just wrap up with that Garnacho chat we had yesterday? Oh, God, do you want to do it? Do we, should we send it for um, a video? I, I think that's going to... You're going to have to read I, it out. Come on, let's do it. No. Let's do it. Come on. Oh, Rob. Rob on the Promised Land podcast. Make sure to check it out. Yeah, please Scott, subscribe. It's fantastic see. Manchester United, United podcast. podcast. Corners of the Guna, Carnage, and some championship action come over to WDA too. Um... Gone out show. I don't want to miss 
kind of misspell or mis misquote anyone. Misquote anyone. What was the what was the take? From Rob. This was not me, by the way. I didn't but you say agree this, but my, my podcast <laughs> friend. I, I do I I think you it, agree with I it, think it's a very strong case and I, I do I, I think I agree with it. Um God. The you know, chat's gonna kill us, honestly. Uh so what Engagement. he said uh, what <laughs> <laughs> So what he said was Garnacho at nineteen is more complete than Ronaldo at nineteen. It's not a wild take. It's, it's Twitter not, thinks it is. It's not wild because if you took Cristiano Ronaldo at that point, let's not forget that when he came to the Premier League, we all looked at him and went, this guy's way too flash, has no end product at Skinny. the end of it. Slim, doesn't look strong. Like Nobody could see when Ronaldo arrived at Man United that he was going to go on to be what he became. I think over time, it started to become clear that the the rate at which he was developing was incredible. And so maybe a few years into his United career, you went, bloody hell, this guy's like yeah. the best player in the world. But I didn't see it when he first arrived. So I'm not going to say that's a wild take. Garnacho looks further along the progression line now at that age than Ronaldo did. But Ronaldo is so great that I yeah. don't think you can ever say that Garnacho has that season. Mm, I disagree. Okay. I think Ronaldo. We're talking 2004, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I, I see. I remember Ronaldo a lot because Liverpool were so interested in him, and we were begging, begging Phil Thompson at the time and Gerard Julier. Wenger tried to get him as well. Yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo was special from the moment. Wenger met him from I the know. moment yeah. I saw him, and I remember seeing him in the Euro under 18s or 21s. I thought this guy, I want him at all costs. It was him, and do you remember the other Portuguese winger who used to do Charisma? So, Charisma was better than Ronaldo for Charisma, a while. Exactly. People Rona people don't know this. Ronaldo was the talk of well, in, in my you know maybe I, I was a great scout from day then. But Garnacho is is good and he's different. Garnacho is more Martinelli for me, in terms of directness and running and energy. You could tell Ronaldo if harnessed and coached properly had the natural talent to reached the very top and he'd done that. What well, you didn't see there was Harry was about to take on the live chat from the official not yeah. in the <laughs> For a few, Look, I said to Scott, I don't agree because if you actually look at what... Uh, uh, you guys watched more of him than I was... No, we watched him and you didn't. Uh, no, I didn't. I, wa I watched... Jakey was I watched three. Unless you watched... Jakey was three womb. when Ronaldo signed for United. I watched extensive... Extensive it's not the same thing, footage. mate. It's not the same footage. thing. It's not the same thing. Extensive footage. Right? If we want to do it based I, I, on no, stats, he, he made the Euro 2004 team of the year, the away for best 11 in 2004 as well. Greece okay. made him cry in Euro yeah. 2004, by the way. Had a great tournament, though. Twice. Didn't he? he had a great tournament. So, for starters, did, what did Garnacho do at the World Cup? Uh, but not that's, not, um, that's literally not what he's saying. He's saying he's more complete as in he makes better decisions than Ronaldo did at the time. You can look at dig up interviews like Ruud van Nistelrooy and these players who used to say, used to play alongside him, used to be frustrated as hell at the fact that Ronaldo used to hold on to the ball and make bad decisions or try and do a bit of skill when he could put a cross So basically it. what you're telling That's me is Garnacho has about. better, which I agree with, this is what I agree with, Garnacho has better decision making than Ronaldo did at the same age. But if you're talking about the ability and ceiling, nobody of is saying Ronaldo, ability nobody or ceiling. Ganancho. Nobody's saying. But I that. made the point of saying that I'm not talking about the ceiling here. Nobody's I literally about the ceiling. said that when I was talking. The ceiling thing is a t totally yes, different. Yes, that's thing. a different conversation. But not. Different conversation. But you're telling me when you watched Ronaldo in that in 2004, you didn't think that he was not. I don't think any. I don't think Gonacho is a complete player either. I think, but he's probably slightly more complete in terms of his final product and decision making at that time. So you're agreeing. So you're agreeing with us. No, decision making. Decision making. But in terms of like his actual raw ability. We're not it, saying raw ability. No, that makes me more a complete player, in my opinion. If you if your raw ability is better no, than but like, if you've got talent and you don't like use it to, for the for the good of the team. Yeah. And like, also look who Ronaldo was doing ability, up against as well. Raw ability is this like is, this happened after the Everton game at the weekend. Raw, raw, look, raw ability would be someone like Nicholas and Elka, right? He ended up becoming a footballing journeyman and not Elka. achieving yeah. a fraction of the things that yeah. his ability dictated. And at 19, he was amazing. He, he no, came I into the Arsenal Elka. team. Do you remember that goal against, Ars uh, against Man United yeah. at Highbury? Yeah. The 97-98 season. We were like, whoa. I've got way controversial opinions about Anelka. Go on. No, I'm just... Going. He had more ability than Thierry Henry. Well, two, there you go, I've said it. 
that's the thing. Like, and thank you. I, th- I thought I thought I'm gonna get. Yeah. It's true. From Arsenal fans, it's true. It was amazing. And Nelka was Wait, a just, what different. Was the, what was the take in? I didn't. I just heard Nicola, better than Nicholas and Nelka in terms of natural ability had more when he first broke through than Thierry Henry did. Yeah, now, I feel Thierry, that's, that's but this is what we're saying with Garnacho and Ronaldo. Garnacho, you look at him and you go, he's ready now. Ronaldo, when he first came in, and we're talking 18-year-old Ronaldo, you weren't sure if he was going to get to that next but stage. But ready right now for what? This is a crazy debate. <laughs> like, Garnacho ready but, right now for what? What are we talk? What he's like playing? Every, Ronaldo was, wasn't ready right now to be one of the best players in the Re- world. And Ronaldo at this age was getting Andrew's forty like, average forty Scott, minutes a game, sixty Scott, sixty Scott, minutes a game. That's how you're supposed to manage guys, a young player. That's guys, how you're supposed Scott, to manage Scott, a player. Scott, Scott, I get it. Garnacho's only I, playing. Garnacho's only playing because, because he has to. In an awful United team. That Ronaldo, we know that Man United team was so he was surrounded by mega stars. Scott, it's not quite the same. I get your points about decision making, and he's more mature. I agree with that. I agree. Yeah, he's more of a mature. Yeah, Ronaldo was so immature at that that's age. But then what, work, that's that's basically what we're saying. Oh, that's fine. That's then. what we're saying. Okay, that's fine. Okay, Nobody, yeah, not even Rob, not not that tweet, not me, not Harry, is saying that Garnacho is better than yeah. Ronaldo okay, no, no, or no more talented no than Ronaldo. That. No, no one's saying that. No one's Nobody saying. is it's saying that. Controversial that. at all. Of course, no. but obviously, not even worthy of a debate. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was in the office yesterday losing his shit. No, he was like, oh Scott. my god, no, 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 it's not worth it. That is outrageous. We just wasted seven minutes. <laughs> what? I'm going to walk off. Like the stream, though. Like the stream. It Do you know what? Like... Shout out to Rob as well because he's made yeah. that last five minutes absolutely crawling. No, no. Yeah. Look, no one's saying Garnacho is going to get anywhere near Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Not for a second. Like, Nicolas and Elka never got anywhere near Thierry Henry. But he had the talent to do it and you could see it at a younger age. But that's not how football works. You don't just go like that. Yeah. Sometimes you make the wrong move. Sometimes you sign for the wrong club. Sometimes you hit your ceiling earlier. Look at look at Garnacho. He's hit the ceiling quite early. He, he might have hit his ceiling early. He might not well, get yeah. that much now, better than where he worth, is today. For what it's worth, I do think he's a fantastic yeah, talent. I, I don't agree. think he's overrated. I, I know loads of people say he's overrated. Look, that's just bitterness and whatever. Tribalism. I actually think he's a fantastic talent. But I also think Ronaldo was a... A crazy, insane talent, and you could see it from a very early age. But uh, one final note. He didn't... It was that summer, World Cup 06, where everything happened. Yeah. That was the wink, right? You know, and how they managed him. And the season after that, he turned into a beast. Beast, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and his numbers went like what, this. How old was he? And how old... What's the ages now, um, then? Comparison? 21, 22. That you would have been there. And Ganacho is? 19. And you know we're talking about, like I was just saying that, like your trajectory of your career, it it isn't always like that. Well, Ronaldo's was kind of like that and then it went bang. Whereas Garnacho's might just slowly go, like, you don't know, Mm. you don't know. Mm. But, so no no more losing the your point mind. we're oh, making what, the, what, the simple Scott, point is the simple point is, mind. is that you are watching <laughs> you're, just is you're that, so triggered right now <laughs> honestly so, hashtag what? triggered Jakey in the, <laughs> the, the point that we're making is that when Ronaldo first burst onto the scene you couldn't nobody would have put their hand on their heart and said this kid is going to go on great. to be arguably the GOAT yeah. nobody and if anyone says they did they're a liar they're a liar. Arsene Wenger brought him, like, got together with him, thought he was going to be a good player. Didn't think he was going to be the best player in the world. You didn't think he was going to be. Don't I smile. No, you I didn't. swear I no, did. No, you didn't. Harry, I did. Chris Khan What's did not Twitter think around? in 2003 <laughs> that Cristiano Facebook. Ronaldo was... Facebook. Oh, Let me check my Facebook. No, it was even before Facebook. I s- <laughs> Harry, I can't explain to you. Did, what did you have on your MSN status? Ha- M- MSN. I'm going to check my MSN, MSN status. I'm going to check my emails. I swear to you, I, saw, I thought Ronaldo was going to the very top. And charisma. So I've got charisma wrong. When you say going to the very top. Yes. Did you do a Harry Redknapp? Did you mean in the debate for the greatest player of all time? No, because that's where he is now. Yeah. Jake, you've got a super... Yeah, we've got a few comments just to wrap up. Uh, Garbo makes a fantastic point. Ronaldo at that age was more interested in flicks and tricks. I remember Skull screaming at him all the time. That's the point we're making. Scott made that point. Um, (laughs) Yeah, Bruno's always screaming at Garnacho. Now, <laughs> yeah, I think he's a bit of revisionism personally. But yeah. there we go. Um, Karen says the disrespect Ronaldo has been getting for the past three to four years is crazy. Um, and Amma makes a great point like, share, subscribe if you could. Um, the Man City Centurion debate is rumbling on about the Invincibles a lot. Uh, to be fair, Harry, I have to say more people in the live chat are saying, if I was to guess, yeah, the Centurions, when the Centurions is um, potentially stripped from Manchester City, which could happen allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> 
I say, I said potentially. And, and Karen makes right, a great if, point if, that Ronaldo if, was playing in yes. the US at 19. If, if it is strict, yes. <laughs> then there's yes. no debate anymore, no debate. is there? I agree, see, there you go. And it, does, it pains me to say that because they're my rivals, direct rivals right now, but that's just me. And Ian Wright was spot on the other night on Monday Night Football when he said that it's not even fair on Man City that this is hanging over them. Deal with it. It needs to be done one way or the other. Dan Atcher could play at the Copa America this summer when he's 19. There we go. So if he gets in the team of the tournament. Uh, Grizz, Harry, Scott, uh, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> what a pleasure. Thanks so much, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed the show. A little bit of everything today. Uh, let us know your thoughts on some of the topics. What were the gone at show? There was the Centurions Invincibles. There was, does United and Liverpool mean the same anymore? Quite a few to get stuck Great into. Chat. So if you enjoyed, Great make sure to leave a like. Chat. It really does mean a lot and shows us that you're enjoying the streams. We've got plenty more coming up over the coming weeks. We'll be back on Monday. We've got some pre-records coming out over the we're next couple of weeks as well. Tomorrow. Back tomorrow as well for a Champions League draw. The content's coming oh, thick and fast. committed to it now. Yeah, yeah. It's done. yeah we have to do it now. Tomorrow, just before 12, Champions League draw. We'll see you Arsenal having the next round, Man City, etc., Real Madrid. So we'll see you then. Take care. Turn on your post notifications and we'll see you in the next one.